Ed Malaspina, the CEO here at HAI Group, and welcome to our first annual HAI Group Policy Holder Summit. Thank you, and also thank you to the staff um, who put this together. Um, it's going to be a, a wonderful opportunity for everyone to learn a little bit more about insurance. I call this kind of insurance 101. We're going to hear from underwriting, account services, claims, risk control, um, they'll be able to share a little bit of their knowledge with you and tips to help you make informed decisions regarding uh, your insurance. And But before we get into that and today's topics, uh, we have an exciting announcement. This summer, we will be unveiling a brand new website uh, designed to streamline your interactions with AHII Group and provide easy access to all the free resources available to you. So keep an eye out for further updates about the website's launch as it approaches. In the meantime, here's a preview. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, stay tuned for updates. We can't wait to show you more. Now let's dive into our first topic of the day, underwriting. So take it away, Robert and Mark. Okay, thank you, Ed. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert Stanchikevich. I'm an underwriting manager here at HAI Group. Just wanna welcome uh, you to, to the underwriting fundamentals for property and casualty insurance. Uh, Mark and I will provide you with an overview of the property and liability underwriting process at HAI Group. From understanding risk exposures to evaluating potential losses, we will touch up on the key concepts that shape underwriting strategies, ensuring a solid foundation for navigating the complexities of property and casualty insurance. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, our agenda consists of the following items. Uh, we will define insurance underwriting. We will go over the basics of property and liability underwriting. Uh, we will let you know what else underwriters think about what keeps us up at night. Um, at the end of our presentation, we'll answer your questions. And for that, please use the Q&A feature. Uh, next slide. Okay, so what is underwriting? Um, the International Risk Management Institute defines it as a process of determining whether to accept a risk, and if so, the extent of insurance coverage a company will provide for that acceptable risk and at what rate. So underwriting entails um, assuming the risk of a potential future event. This is where the insurance carrier will agree to share in on businesses' future losses in exchange for premium. Underwriter's job is to follow companies' guidelines that specifically state what type uh, exposures and type of businesses to accept. So the term exposures does refer to the various risks that member and policyholders face, uh, which could lead, lead to a financial loss or a liability. 
based on these guidelines, an underwriter will either accept the risk or will decline it. Then we have charging premiums in exchange for a promise to provide coverage or compensation if that event occurs. Once the risk is accepted, the underwriter has to determine what is fair premium to be collected for the promise to pay future claims. And this premium is based on limits provided, um, deductibles, uh, loss performance, and loss exposures. The uh, loss performance is based on businesses past claims and then how these claims compare to the premiums that were collected over the years. Um, premiums from all the policyholders have to be adequate so the insurance carrier can pay for future losses, all related expenses, and also they need to make a reasonable profit so dividends can be paid out to all the members that qualify. Premium adequacy is very important to underwriters. Um, if the premiums are too low, this could place the insurance carrier in financial trouble where it could potentially have insufficient funds to pay all future losses. Now, on the other hand, if our premiums are too high, insurance carrier will also lose customers and it will suffer financially as well. So um, too low or too high is, is never too good. Next slide, please. Now we'll dive into the basics of uh, property underwriting. And on the next slide, when we price property insurance, the underwriter evaluates the, prop, the four property risk characteristics, and this is known as COPE. COPE is an acronym, and that stands for construction, occupancy, protection, and exposure. Um, under construction, the underwriter will look at the construction mix of the properties to be insured. And we have six major construction types uh, in the industry. Uh, the, these range from class one to class six. So they start with frame. Number two is joisted masonry. Number three would be non-combustible construction. Then we have masonry non-combustible. Then we have modified fire resistive. And then the final one is fire resistive construction. These are uh, mostly the high rises that we see on public housing schedules. And uh, knowing the construction class is important. For example, frame construction is susceptible to faster spread of fire and therefore will result in more losses that um, uh, insurance uh, carriers have to um, pay for. Now, on the other hand, uh, frame construction could be good, for example, in an earthquake event, um, uh, frame construction might uh, have uh, fewer losses than let's say fire resistive construction because in an earthquake event, um, that building might crumble and crack and perhaps generate more losses in that earthquake event. Moving on to the next one here under occupancy, the underwriter needs to know the what the buildings are used for. Um, in the habitational industry, this is what we ensure. Uh, the most common occupancies are apartment buildings. Uh, then we have office buildings, community centers, maintenance buildings, and also storage buildings or mini warehouses. Um, some occupancies are prone to more losses than others. Um, another example is apartment buildings. They all have a, a kitchen and cooking facilities. Um, this makes the apartment buildings uh, more susceptible to fire losses as they relate to uh, cooking. And um, then next one would be protection. Uh, this is categorized as public protection and private protection. Public protection has to do with the local fire department and how close the water sources to the buildings that we insure. And also has to do how fast the fire department uh, will respond to a fire. The faster that they respond to a fire, more, more likely there will be, um, the losses will not be as severe. The, if properties are remote, 
for example, and the water must be brought in or the fire department is volunteer and it takes them longer to respond. In that situation, the, uh, the losses might be more severe because it will take the firefighters uh, longer to put out that fire. Um, as far as private protection, um, it has to do with protection systems within the buildings. A uh, good example of that is a sprinkler system or those uh, stovetop containers that when the fire is set, they will automatically uh, go off and uh, put the fire out. So these systems uh, tend to limit the severity um, of a fire loss. Now for exposure, uh, this is where underwriters assess outside factors that can contribute to a claim. An underwriter will ask him or herself, what is this uh, area that might contribute to a higher frequency or severity, severity of a loss to occur? Uh, this will include physical risks, uh, example uh, being in your uh, fireworks manufacturer, like in this slide, there's an explosion at that uh, factory, then uh, unfortunately all, probably most of the buildings next to it will also catch on fire and it will be damaged. So that will cause uh, additional property claims. And there's also other um, exposures, which most of them are caused by mother nature. And I will go over these on the next slide. Uh, let's move on. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, cat management. Uh, these are exposures that could cause catastrophic losses. And this is not just to one policyholder, but multiple policyholders during any one event. Uh, these include things like wind, hail, uh, wildfires, floods, earthquake. Um, underwriters do utilize tools uh, to help them determine the level of exposure to these catastrophic events. As an example, the underwriter tools have shown that West Coast is uh, prone to more wildfires and earthquakes. Um, the East Coast is uh, prone to hurricanes. And then lately, uh, the Midwest and perhaps the West are uh, prone, prone to tornadoes and flooding. So these are some of the um, areas that the tools have determined that they're perhaps higher risk for um, these catastrophic events. Um, also, buildings that are very close to each other, uh, these are susceptible to greater losses. Um, just to give an example, if there's a, a fire or a wind event to, to one building, then most likely that will spread and spread to the other buildings next to it. Um, so underwriters do, um, they can control these exposures and they can simply apply uh, a sublimit for certain types of losses, or they can even apply higher deductibles to sort of uh, control these exposures and pass some of the risk onto a uh, member or um, policyholder. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, we also have other exposures that could contribute to a property loss. Um, there are some examples here um, on the slide. So um, like that example for grills, obviously if tenants uh, use grills and they're close to uh, a building, there's a higher uh, potential of a fire loss. Um, that's why it's important to have uh, guidelines on things like grills to minimize uh, future losses. Um, also, underwriters always want to know the properties, that the properties are maintained, and if uh, management is keeping up with building updates. Um, as we know, buildings do require constant maintenance and updates, and when these properties are um, not maintained properly, this will most likely generate um, higher property losses. Um, Example that I can think of is um, roofs. Um, if a roof is older and it's uh, close to its um, expiration date, it might it might have uh, leaks in it. 
so these leaks will cause water damage to the um, apartments uh, just below that. Um, so that will cause additional losses. So it's important to always make sure that your uh, building systems are up to date and everything is updated. Uh, another big one is the electrical system. Um, all the electrical system is prone to short circuits or, or even fires. And um, there are um, fires generated because of old um, electrical system that has not been updated. Okay, so um, this is all I have to say on the property portion. Um, and now I will uh, pass the presentation over to Mark. Um, Mark will talk about the basics of liability and auto underwriting. And I do thank you for your time. Thank you, Robert. Good morning. My name is Mark Judkins. I'm one of the underwriting managers at HI Group. Um, I'm going to speak to you, as, as Robert advised, uh, about liability and auto. Um, so kicking right off, some of the basics of auto exposures that we see, we look at slip, and, slip trip, and fall potentials. You know, cracked sidewalks, potholes, um, ice and snow. Is it being removed promptly? Are you in a, an area of the country that has that issue? Um, security. Are there? Do you have security cameras? Do you have guards? Are there? Uh, how are your doors secured? Um, which leads into the ingress egress, um, both doors and windows. Um, you know, access to the property could be gates, uh, fences. Um, also, on your on your lower windows, if you have. Uh, Bars on your windows, are they maintained so that they can be easily removed in the event of, of a fire? Which falls to, to the upkeep of premises. We're, we're hoping that everyone is, is doing everything they can to keep upkeep their premises. Um, but we do take a look at those factors and, and we do try to get a good picture of how the uh, each building is maintained. Um, Attractive nuisances, pools, bas basketball courts, playgrounds, trampolines. Um, you know, these kind of features can make your property a magnet for every kid in the neighborhood. Um, but in doing so, it also makes it dangerous for those kids in the neighborhood because it's attractive for everyone to come and play on them because they're available. So you want to do what you can. We, we look at them and, and try to take them into account. Um, we're seeing more and more mixed occupancies, um, uh, daycares, restaurants, schools, retail, it generates a lot of foot traffic. Um, some such as retail can actually introduce theft potential and, and armed robberies, um, restaurants we're, we're looking at those are, have commercial cooking applications. Um, so the more, more, uh, full service restaurant, if you will, could have fry letters, could uh, have a, an uncleaned range hood, um, just items that we try to pay attention to and take into account as we're going through our underwriting. Next slide, please. So on to auto. Um, we, our auto team here um, handles a book of about $10 million. Um, but in doing so, they they look at fleet size. Uh, how you know how many vehicles are in your in your fleet? Uh, some states say fleet is under ten vehicles. Others say under five. Uh, what type of vehicles? And not just type, but size. Vehicles are are rated on distance, type, and size of vehicle. So they all go into a, a, and generate a specific class code. Uh, that my our underwriters will rate against. Loss experience, what do your losses look like? Were they at fault losses? You know, we, we try to be considerate and, and see if you've got something that was no fault of your own, say it was an uninsured or an underinsured motorist claim. Um, they really do try to, to take that into consideration when they're rating. Um, MVRs, motor vehicle records, 
or reports. We don't collect them, um, but we're hoping you ask for them. Uh, if you don't, you don't. Uh, but it gives you a good picture of who is driving your vehicles. Um, and sometimes it, it can lead to uh, you know conversations with your staff. Um, human element programs. This is one of my favorites. It is the least one of the least expensive things that anyone can do to try and limit the loss. And that's, you know, preventive maintenance, you know, walking around a vehicle, a, a quick inspection every day, making sure you don't have a flat tire, making sure that, um, you know, you, your, your engine is running and it sounds right, you know, just staying on top of those programs. Um, radius, are your vehicles traveling more than 50 miles? Now, for our, our members, typically that's that's not a typical scenario. But what if you're taking a vehicle to a conference? What if you were uh, traveling to to go to a, a, an office to, for whatever reason? That that makes a difference. Uh, you're increasing your exposure by traveling more than a local radius. And then hired non-owned exposure. Are you hiring or renting vehicles? Everyone has a hired non-owned auto exposure. Uh, are you making a bank run? Is is a secretary or somebody stopping off to to drop off the mail or make a deposit? Those fall under your non-owned auto exposures. Um, next slide, please. So, what else are we thinking about? You know, one of the hot things in the market is artificial intelligence. Um, we are something that that's something we're continuing to monitor and, and stay on top of and looking at how it can assist us in underwriting. Um, we're also keeping an eye on any regulations that may affect us in in trying to use artificial intelligence. Uh, if you it, you may be aware, we're Institute on uh, New Technology. We are uh, in the middle of uh, testing and, develop and developing a new underwriting um, computer system program, uh, which will help us be more effective and be able to process work quicker. The marketplace, what is happening now? What are our competitors doing? Um, you know, they're all fighting for market share of the marketplace, but what, what we're really seeing is there are several carriers actually exiting the housing marketplace, but we're staying, we're here for our members. Emerging risks, what are the upcoming challenges for our members? How are new products being developed? You know, a named storm hit Southern California this year. Last time that happened, I believe it was about a hundred years ago. So we're seeing changes in climate. We're seeing changes across the country uh, you know, climate-wise, how is that affecting how we underwrite? Um, but that's that's pretty much our, uh, what else are we thinking about? So next slide, please. So this leads us to the question section. Does anyone have any questions for us? Mark, we do have one that came in through the Q&A. Um, our local fire department put on a presentation regarding the need for an additional station, which will improve our community's ISO rating. Is there an ISO rating that HEI recognizes as a level for better insurance rates? Um, uh, I can, yeah, I can probably that? take this. Sure. Um, uh, we do okay. recognize it. it. It's a number system. Um, it goes from one, which is uh, the best to number 10 which is practically unprotected. Uh, but we do uh, look at that. And I believe I had that in my presentation that obviously the, the lower the number uh, and also the, the closer the fire station to your properties, the better. And this will be reflected in the pricing of your uh, property insurance. Um, so as long as there's fire hydrants close by, as long as there's fire stations uh, within, um, one to three miles or even closer, then the closer, the better. So I hope that that answers your question. So it looks like we had another one come in. 
Can you speak to any trends or current issues in the area of auto coverage? Um, hmm. Trends. Um, we're seeing needs for higher limits. Um, at the same time, our it's a challenge to obtain those limits at times, uh, depending on uh, you know your your schedule and your law history. Apologies. Um, beyond that, as far as trends, I can't say that I'm seeing much other than uh, you know the drivers. We're seeing quite a bit of distracted driving. Um, you know, I, I heard of one and actually saw pictures of one today of a, a friend who she was hit head on by someone who dropped his phone. And that phone uh, went down, he went down to pick it up and caused a head on collision. Uh, both people survived and, and that's okay, but the vehicles were beyond uh, totaled. Uh, it was crazy they survived the, the accident. Um, we're seeing a lot of aggressive driving. It's on the rise. Um, we're seeing it's across the country. It's not. Um, it's not germane to any one area. Area. I think that's about everything that we're seeing. Mark, Mark, yeah. uh, Mark or Robert, we had another question actually really quick on concentration. Um, somebody just wanted a little more explanation on that and like how you, how as an underwriter, you look at that. Like, how do you determine a concentration for a given area? Uh, sure, I can take that. Um, underwriter will look at the, let's say a, a complex, which is um, a number of buildings within one location and usually that complex has, has a specific name. Um, underwriter will look at the distance, especially for frame uh, buildings, because uh, those are more susceptible to fire. If, for example, they're closer than 100 feet apart, then the underwriter will look at it as there's a higher potential of a loss because I will not only lose the building where the fire originated, I will most likely have damage to the surrounding buildings if they're uh, close by. Um, so this is something that we uh, we look at carefully and analyze it. Um, um, and many times we can determine the distance because uh, we do have Google Maps <laughs> that helps us determine. Um, uh, also, um, there's another aspect where um, one insurance carrier could have a, a large uh, concentration of, of all buildings from multiple policies in one area. So from the catastrophic point of view, there's a, a higher chance of a loss there as well, because we will not just pay uh, for one policyholder, we will uh, most likely pay uh, multiple policies and there'll be uh, much higher losses in a catastrophic event like a hurricane, uh, flooding or earthquake, whatever it might be. Thank you. So we got a few more questions coming in. Um, housing authorities be held responsible from a liability perspective if building sprinkler systems are not maintained? That would be a claim scenario. There are claims people would need to comment um, we really can't get into any hypothetical um, scenarios. Sorry. Uh, the next one is, how is litigation cost affecting settlements and claims? That's another one that we'll get into in the last session of the day, actually. In the claim session, we'll be, we'll, we'll be diving into litigation um, and, and how some of the trends there are impacting claims. Thank you for that question. And then we have another question from Margarita. Uh, about aggressive driving and drug legalization and if those things are factor into each other. I don't think we can comment on that specifically either, but I don't know, mm -hmm. Mark, if you could sp talk to in general, uh, liability wise, obviously if an employee um, is driving a fleet vehicle and they're under the influence and there's an incident that that could create some serious liability, correct? Uh, you know, an employee driving 
aggressively or under the influence, of course, it's going to increase liability. What really helps with that is a driver safety program and driver safety training and keeping everybody on the same page. Um, as far as specific claims and limits of liability, I, again, I, I can't get into that, uh, unfortunately. We have another question here on smart burners. So a housing authority will be installing smart burners, which I believe are the burners that help reduce um, occurrences of fire, smoke damage, um, you know, installing, like you mentioned the canisters as well, um, but installing something like this could, uh, you know, could also help reduce water damage. The person points out here, is that anything that underwriters take into consideration uh, when underwriting a property? Whether these burners are, are smart burners or they have other risk mitigation uh, mechanisms in place. Um, I'll I'll take that. Um, anything that will um, minimize the the spread of fire is is welcome. Um, may not necessarily uh, reduce your premium right away. However, um, having these uh, programs in place, um, you will mo most likely see. Uh, uh, less frequency of fire losses and underwriters do look at that and they will price your uh, future policies accordingly uh, and you will see perhaps lower premiums or at least your increases won't be as severe because you are protecting your properties with these devices so it is always welcome and it will uh, pay dividends in the long run yes do you yeah. just we have another question here. Does the legal climate in the state uh, factor in at all to the underwriting process? Like say there's a tort limitation in a state. Um, is that is that looked at from a liability, liability perspective at all when you guys are assessing properties? I, I can't say that we don't, that we're not aware of it, but um, when it comes to exactly pricing, you know, we do try to avoid highly litigious areas, but, and, and the GL could be impacted. Um, but we do the best we can and try to provide a fair, fair coverage and, and fair pricing. All right, that's so, all the questions that we have right now. Do we have anybody, any other questions before we wrap up the session and move on? Oh, we just got another one. The question that we just got is about um, suggestions for drivers. Um, I think this is something that um, we can also take up in the next session when we talk about risk control. Uh, risk control yep. director Beth Owens and team will be talking about some of the resources that we have at an HAI group that can help. Um, you know, we have a fleet manual that's available to uh, members and policyholders that they can reference um, and other resources. Um, so we'll talk about that in the next session. Um, here's one. How are bouncy houses, how bounce houses, sorry, perceived by underwriting? You guys talked about attractive nuisances. Would that, would that fall in that category? It would absolutely fall in that category. <laughs> and that, that's another thing that the risk control team could talk to you about. Um, if you talk to your risk control consultant, um, you know, if you have any questions specifically about the types of, um, you know, items that you have on your property, bounce houses, um, playgrounds, and, and creating policies for residents so that those things are potentially not allowed, like, you know, inflatable pools, et cetera, those types of things. Generally, um, you know, uh, our risk team can help create sample policies in certain circumstances um, to get you started down the right track. But obviously, we always suggest uh, talking to your legal counsel about those types of things as well, so. Um, we've posted the link to the next session, which starts uh, in about 30 minutes at 1220. So you have a little bit of a break going into the next session, answer some emails, et cetera. Um, but that'll be the link to get into the next session, which will be covering account services and risk control. Uh, so if there are no other questions, oh, we have just one just came through. This is about auto coverage. So Mark, I think maybe you can help with this. When temporary employees are brought on through a contracted agency, um, are they covered under the vehicle insurance that is provided through HAI group or how, how does that work? 
Um, and, or is that a, as a specific scenario that they should reach that, out to their? Unfortunately, they should be reaching out to their to their account services rep. Um, we really can't get into potential scenarios. Um, it's just not a good idea. Yeah. But thank you for that question. And we will, uh, for all the questions that come through, we will follow up directly. Um, you know, we'll address them via the email that we send after, which is going to include resources, the recordings, and the slide presentations from today. But, um, you know, we'll include, include information there, but we'll also send these questions along to your account representative um, so that they can follow up with you directly. All right, I think that does it. Thank you, Mark and Robert. Thank you. And we'll uh, sure. we'll see you soon at twelve twenty for the next session on account services and risk control. The session link is there in the comment section, um, and we've also sent a e couple emails this morning with those links. So we'll see you soon. And thank you, thank you all for attending the session today. Thank you.